Hi, hey, good morning, everyone. So thanks for the intro, Jun. Uh, it's Neil. Uh, so yeah, I'm David. I'm going to talk about Rodi monetization in the context of cybersecurity and how to use uh, Knife Like Afghan Flink. Uh, before we get started, uh, I'm Pierre Vidal, I'm the Director of Product Management uh, for Data in Motion at Clutter. Uh, I'm a committer and PMC member for the Apache Knife by projects. Um, I've been involved in this project since, since 2015, so it's been quite some time now. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and GitHub. Um, if you are familiar with Knife you probably came across some of my blog posts, even though I'm not publishing anything. Uh, lately, and uh, I just don't have time. Um, just as a quick note, I did prepare a demo for today, and during the night, all of my DMs have destroyed uh, probably some kind of scripts we have uh, at Clara. So it will be slide only, uh, but I will be publishing a blog post and a recording of the demo I was supposed to show you today. Uh, so if you follow me on Twitter, you will have all of this information as soon as it's it's available. Sorry about that. Hopefully, it will be uh, interesting. Um, just by raising your hands, uh, who is familiar with Maiva already, or is it something new? Okay, if you see it, okay, that's interesting. So I will quickly talk about what's Maiva. Um, so initially, it's been created by the NSA uh, 16 years ago. It's been donated to the foundation in 2014, and it became a top-level project uh, one year later. What Maiva is? Um, usually, when I talk to some people new to the community or to customers, I'm saying that Maiva is like a toolbox that you can use to move data around from, from a location uh, to another location. If you have a use case, you need data, right? I mean, that's the first step. Whatever use case you had, you want to process some, some data and you need to acquire the data and make it available in the right systems, in the right destinations and in the right format. So Wi-Fi is really about moving data around and making sure it's available. You may want to uh, change the formats, make sure it's valid according to uh, a given schema. Uh, do some uh, filtering, enrichment, whatever. So it's really about moving that around and making it available to systems in the right, um, let's say, format. Uh, and you have the Nifi agents. That's a lightweight version of Nifi that uh, we deploy on the edge, even even though edge is kind of um, an overlaid its world. I will explain a bit more about this. Um, that's what you can use to get the data and do already some processing where the data is being created. It can be on the edge, but it can be in other locations. I will be uh, giving some examples. Uh, that's probably something that is familiar for you. If you're working in some companies, uh, you are probably using a lot of solutions uh, across all of your job. It can be in the systems you, you use in Delhi uh, for uh, messaging like Slack or, or Microsoft Teams. It can be uh, your workspace, uh, like if you are using uh, Google Workspace. But it can be also... Uh, uh, cloud providers, it can be uh, data warehouse solutions. Uh, you probably have a bunch of servers or network equipment. All of the systems are connected together. And when it comes to cybersecurity, you need to collect logs from all of the systems. Collecting logs just from a bunch of servers is not enough anymore. You need to have logs from all of the systems you are using across your company. And you need to aggregate, merge all of this to get useful insight, especially for cybersecurity. Uh, if we look at what happened recently to uh, to a famous company, well, uh, you need to look at a lot of things, uh, including all of the systems uh, your employees are going to access. Uh, so you need to connect all of those systems, and uh, it can be challenging because all of those systems have very different ways of making the data available uh, for you to to consume. So NiFi is really a great solution if you want to have like universal data distribution. Uh, between all of those systems. NiFi, by definition, is like agnostic in terms of uh, data formats, data sizes, uh, protocols. You can integrate everything together. So that's that's really what NiFi is about. Uh, right now, uh, in the Apache NiFi project, we have uh, over 500 plus components. Uh, so it's including connectors to integrate with pretty much any system. Uh, this image is very outdated, so please don't look at the logos. Uh, it should probably be updated to reflect more recent technologies. But the main idea is we have like a lot of connectors to integrate with pretty much anything. And like when you connect uh, a source and a destination, we also have components that you can use, let's say, in the middle of your data flow uh, to do things on your data, like uh, changing the format, enrichment, filtering, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I won't go into the details, but the idea of this slide is uh, we have a very large uh, set of components, we are adding components like every week uh, and and you can connect pretty much anything. 
uh, very quickly about the Apache Notify ecosystem, uh, because, well, it's not just the Notify project. So we have the Notify project, uh, web-based uh, uh, UI, no code UI that where you can drag and drop the components, uh, connect everything together and have your data flows and move the data around. Uh, but then we have the Minify agents. We have two versions, Java version, C++ version. As I said, it's a very lightweight version of Minify that we can deploy uh, depending on your use cases and where you want to deploy your Minify agents, you would choose one version over the other. Uh, if you have specific questions on this, uh, happy to answer. We have also uh, a video on YouTube where we are explaining the differences between the two. Uh, Nifi registry is the CI CD solution for Nifi. So when you design your flows, uh, you probably want to version control your flows, um, kind of a Git repository, but you're for, I mean, for your flow definitions that you build in Nifi. And it's also used to uh, automating kind of deployment plate. If you are building your flows um, in a dev environment and you want to push a new version in production, that's where the Nifi registry could be used to automate all of this. Uh, Nifi C2 server is specific to the Minify agents. It's being used to push flow definitions to the agents. So really tell the agents what they should be doing in terms of collecting data, processing the data, and where to send it. Um, and then we have Nifi FDS. It's a library uh, that we use for having consistent UI UX across all of our components. So if if you want to be involved in the Nifi project, well, you can pick any any kind of this, uh, any one of these uh, sub projects. So if you are a C++ kind of person, you can, you can help us and contribute to the project. Um, I gave a talk at the Apache Con in Berlin three years ago, and I had this slice, and I wanted to have the same slide and show you uh, the numbers and the differences. Uh, it was almost three years ago, uh, exactly. Uh, and it's just to show you how the, the Apache NiPy project is active with a strong community. So uh, in terms of members on the side channel, we have uh, over 2,400 was a bit more than 500 three years ago. So uh, a lot of people involved in the community, if you are not already joined the Slack channel, that's probably where, I mean, you can use the mailing list, but now most people are really uh, interacting on the Slack channels of the Avashina of that project. Uh, 450 plus contributors, we almost doubled uh, the number in three years, 60 committers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Apache NiFi 118 is the release that we are going to have like in the next few days. There is a release on the day boots right now happening. Um, just a quick note, I mean, if you are familiar with the, the NiFi projects, uh, 118 is going to be a significant release with a lot of new features. Uh, if we have time for Q&As uh, at the end, and if you have questions on what will be part of this release, please let me know, happy to share with you uh, the exciting, exciting features we will have. And also something important, um, NIFI 118 is probably going to be the last one uh, for 1.x. Uh, we will switch to uh, NIFI 2.0 once we are done with this release uh, because we want to keep all of our dependencies uh, up to date and some of our main most important dependencies are dropping Java 8 uh, support. So we want to do the same and that's why we will be switching to NIFI 2.0 and we, will, we also want to uh, take this opportunity to remove a lot of um, of code that we don't want to support anymore, like a bunch of features uh, for which we have better uh, options now. And Docker Falls, it's just to show that uh, NiFi is being used quite a lot. Um, okay, load monetization and in the context of cyber cyber. So you probably know all of this and I, I want to go as fast as possible because otherwise I won't have time to cover uh, everything. So as I said, uh, if you really want to uh, be exhaustive in your cybersecurity use case, you need to make sure that you collect the, the, the logs from all of the systems you have. It's not just about collecting logs from a bunch of servers. Uh, it's It would be too, too, too easy. So you have a lot of systems, and as I said, every system have like has a, a different ways of making the data available, which is uh, a really fun challenge uh, to solve. Then we have uh, different authentication authorization mechanisms. Um, and this is also something you need to, uh, to, to have in mind when you are collecting those logs. Then uh, formats, schemas, I mean, nothing new here, like every system, uh, they decide to have like their own implementation of log. Uh, and uh, for some systems like uh, Cisco BPM, uh, it's a very fun challenge because uh, every type of message they uh, make available has its own schema. I will 
show you some examples about this. So it can make uh, processing of logs like very difficult and NiFi is providing a set of tools to make this uh, easier. Um, once you collect the logs, you want to normalize all of this uh, because as I said, you need to collect the log logs from many systems, but if you want to really uh, get something useful from it, uh, you need to aggregate and merge all of this. Like, uh, for example, if I connect to uh, uh, Cloudera resources, I'm going to first probably authenticate against our SSO uh, system, which is Okta. Uh, and then I will access some resources like uh, uh, Gmail for, for checking my mails in the morning. And then maybe uh, AWS will fall plane if I want to check the state of my VMs where my demo was running um, and, and things like that. And so I'm accessing many resources and you want to have like this feature where I'm connecting first and then doing a lot of things and you want to aggregate all of this and maybe I'm doing something fishy and maybe it was uh, to add up someone because I'm doing something wrong. Uh, and finally, okay, I uh, have this uh, this feature of what your employees are doing and you want to, uh, to take some actions. So when it comes to monitoring, you have usually two uh, aspects. You have dashboarding, it's nice, you, you make nice dashboards, you have uh, the information with uh, real-time information about what's happening. It's great. I mean, everyone loves dashboards, but if you don't have someone looking at your dashboard 24-7, it's kind of useless. So that's one part. It's nice. It's looking nice. It makes a nice demo, uh, ma ma nice presentation. Uh, but then you have also the alerting, like you want to notify people that something wrong is happening so that someone can actually take actions. But even with this, it's usually not enough because maybe someone that you are going to alert is not available and is not able to take any action quickly. So um, we have some customers, some users, they are going actually one step further and they have their system, their monitoring system, taking actions uh, without anyone uh, saying, yes, let's, let's do something. So it could be, um, and I'm giving like real life examples of what I'm seeing with some of our customers. It could be like revoking access for, I don't know, 15 minutes to someone that is doing something wrong because we want to review what, what's happening. Um, and you may, sit, you may say, well, it's kind of a radical operation, but uh, if we look at what happened to uh, Uber, for example, uh, well, they probably want to have something like this where uh, it can be annoying if it's a false positive, but if it's actually a breach and someone is actually getting into your systems, you probably want to take actions. Uh, without waiting for someone to um, actually detect that something wrong is happening. Um, so let's switch to the architecture. So I was uh, doing this slides at three in the morning when my eyes were uh, wide open because of the jet lag. Uh, it's it's what we see at some of our customers uh, and, and and users of MyFi. So it it can be uh, impressive like this. Uh, let me go into um, uh, every part of this uh, architecture. And it's just the first part, but there is, there is another part here uh, in the next slide. Um, so as I said, imagine your company you have a bunch of employees, they have laptops, they have probably smartphones, uh, which would be used for two-factor authentication or pool, for example. And I hope you have two-factor authentication enabled at your company for accessing anything. Really hope you have, uh, you have this. Uh, uh, then you have maybe uh, applications that you built internally that you make available to your employees for, well, just so that they can do that job, right? Uh, then you may have a bunch of servers, network equipments, BDN, etc. And then, as I said, uh, you may have SaaS uh, applications that you are using, Salesforce, uh, Slack, Microsoft Teams, Google Cloud, whatever. I mean, any system you can use internally. And you can also be a, a cloud customer, like maybe you have uh, access to uh, AWS control plane or Azure control plane. So it's a lot of systems that your employees uh, may be accessing when they are doing their job and you want to uh, monitor all of this and you want to get uh, information from all of those systems and making it available in one place so that you can actually do some processing on top of it. So. If I take the examples I was mentioning and what we are using internally at Ferra, like the tools I'm using. Uh, Okta is what we use for SSO, um, and if we look at Okta, and if you want to collect the audit logs, Okta is actually making available these audit logs in only one way. Uh, you can configure your Okta instance to push logs uh, into AWS Event Breach or Splunk. That's the two only options that Okta is providing. 
So assuming you use AWS Event Bridge and then you send the data into Kinesis, that's great. Your logs are available. And then you can use Notify to consume those logs from Kinesis and, and do something about it. That's one thing. Then uh, if we look at uh, Google Workspace, which is what we use at Flowera, uh, so email, Google Drive, and so on, uh, you can configure your workspace, Google Workspace, to make audit logs available. And the only option you have uh, with Google Clouds is to push those logs into a, a Google Cloud Storage bucket. That's then they provide you with an option that is cloud logging so that you can look at logs there. But basically, Google Cloud is making those logs available in a, a object store storage location. And finally, uh, at Cloudera, we are using Slack for messaging. Uh, if you want to look at the audit logs from Slack, Slack is making available an API that you can consume to collect all of the audit logs. So you have three tools, and I'm just taking those three as an example, and you have three very different ways of getting the, the audit logs, like if you want to uh, look at what your employees are doing. Uh, so that's that's where Nifi is very useful because you, you can manage all of these situations. And finally, uh, we have customers deploying the MeNifi agents on laptops, uh, all of the laptops that uh, they provide to their employees. Um, so we have MeNifi agents that are, that are very well suited, suited to, to collect uh, Windows event logs, for example. Um, and all of those logs, well, it's, it's quite a, a massive amount of logs. Uh, one of the customers we have, uh, they have, if I don't say anything stupid, it's like 150,000 assets where they deploy the mean IFI agents. So if you think about it, they have employees across the walls. So you always have logs. I mean, there is always at least a bunch of laptops up and running, right? And you will get the logs. Um, and the MeNiFi agents will be always sending logs. So you also need NiFi uh, to be in a listen mode, like provide a port on which the MeNiFi agents uh, are able to send the logs through. So that's why we provide uh, two options for running NiFi. So we have uh, Dataflow or NiFi on Kubernetes, uh, which is, well, as the, the, names, uh, the name says, it's, it's really about running NiFi on Kubernetes and and leverage all of the advantages of running Nifi and Kubernetes, namely the auto-scaling, uh, resources isolation, uh, self-filling, and, and things like that. Um, Nifi and Kubernetes is great if you need flows uh, running 24-7. And if you have a flow that is listening for external systems to push data into Nifi, that's great. Um, and um, that's what you would be using, for example, with the MeNiFi agents, because you want to expose some endpoint where all of the agents are able to send data uh, into NiFi. And then we have uh, Dataflow functions, uh, which is using NiFi stateless, uh, which is also, I didn't mention it, but it's also a way of using NiFi. Uh, it's not a sub-project of NiFi. It's really uh, a different implementation of the NiFi framework that you can use for some use cases. Uh, I don't want to go into too much uh, technical details about NiFi stateless, but if you have questions, I'm happy to, uh, to answer those questions. The data flow functions is, is a nice way of uh, embedding NiFi flows into the function as a service solutions of the cloud providers. So AWS Lambda, Azure functions, and Google Cloud function. And it's really nice when you have flows uh, that are event-driven or trigger-based, uh, and when you don't need the flow to be always up and running. So if you remember, I was mentioning Google Workspace, they make the, the audit logs available through our um, uh, Google Cloud buckets. So whenever a file is landing uh, in this storage, you want to have a flow starting and processing that file and do something about it. That's where Dataflow functions is great because uh, you can define like an object store trigger and whenever a file is landing in the object store, the function would be starting, your NiFi flow would be instantiated and processing that file and, and once the file Processed, the resources are shut off. So that's really the most efficient, scalable, uh, cost optimized way of running NiFi flows if you have flows that don't need to be running 24 7. Uh, so that's that's really about getting the data in NiFi. Um, and then I was, I didn't mention, but we can also use the MeNiFi agents in very different ways. So as I said, laptops, but it can be, uh, that's actually what we are doing. Uh, internally for the service we provide to, to our customers. You can use the MeNiFi agents as a, a sidecar 
spot kind of deployments to collect the logs from your Kubernetes applications. And you can also, I mean, in a more traditional way, use the MinLiFi agents on, on servers to just tail uh, log files and send all of the information to, uh, to NiFi. So we have the data in NiFi, that's great. Uh, and then, well, I mean, depending on the logs you have, formats and so on, you would de design your flows to process that data. And then something that is quite common for cybersecurity is to do some uh, zero enrichments. Uh, so usually you have a bunch of IP addresses and you want to uh, asso associate uh, a geolocation through those IP addresses. Uh, something you may want to check, for example, when I was talking about Okta, so um, this morning when I accessed some resources internally at Camera, I was authenticating against uh, Okta and I received uh, a push notification on my phone uh, for two-factor authentication approval, right? And uh, my phone was saying, okay, um, are you trying to access X uh, from location Y, okay? And you probably want to check if the laptop accessing the resource is in the same location as the phone because if you are in two different locations, there is probably something wrong. However, there are exceptions to this because if I'm already connected on my VPN of the company, uh, my laptop would be showing somewhere where the VPN is, right? Um, so usually when I'm in Paris at home and I'm walking I'm on the VPN and I'm showing uh, from a location in Ireland, but my phone is still in France. So in that case, being in two locations is okay. Uh, so you need also to think about these cases where uh, potentially your devices are not in the same location, but that's expected because you are the VPN. So you need to, to, to keep this in mind and you can do it in the processing, but it was just an example. But geolocation is very important uh, when you are doing cybersecurity uses. Uh, then when you have normalized and enriched your data, you want to push all of this into Kafka. What we see at our customers, and that's what we usually recommend, is to have one topic per uh, type of log or per sources. Um, that's usually what we see is the most efficient. Very quickly, but I don't want to go into the details, uh, in the Apache NiFi project, we also provide uh, a solution based on NiFi setless, uh, allowing you to take in NiFi flow for which you have Kafka as the source or the destination and convert this uh, flow into a Kafka Connect connector. So it's quite powerful because you can use the no-code UI, design a flow where the source is Kafka or where the destination is Kafka, take this flow and turn it into a Kafka Connect connector. Uh, a colleague of mine is actually uh, making a talk at uh, Current 22, which is a conference uh, happening this week uh, about this. So if, if that's something uh, you want to know more about, well, you can ask me questions, but it's also um, uh, something I would recommend you to, uh, to check out when, when it's available. Uh, okay, so that was, that was the first part. Then once your, your data is in, in Kafka, um, what we what we see at our customers is to use Clean SQL and to run uh, streaming jobs on top of this data. So, as I said, uh, if you really want to get some useful information, you want to merge all of this data together. Uh, so you want to do some join operations on some uh, meaningful values, and then you can also use Clean SQL with um, uh, to do some enrichments, like for example, database. Uh, or you can also uh, e execute some endpoints uh, where you can uh, do some machine learning inference. So for example, database, what we see at some of our customers is to use uh, Apache Edge Pains to do some enrichments with, for example, the location of the employees. Like in, in our Cloud Aura system, my location is uh, Paris, France. Uh, if, uh, well, actually when I arrived in the US, uh, two days ago, and I connected for the first time uh, on on my laptop. I received a notification on Slack saying, "Well, you are not in the location where you are supposed to be. Uh, is it expected?" Well, I say yes. That's fine. Uh, but that's the kind of things you may want to check, like um, for for the logs, enriching the logs with the location where the employee is supposed to be, so that you can make some comparisons. For machine learning. Well, I mean, I, I'm not going to tell you what you can do with machine learning, but uh, something that we see is to uh, detect outliers in the behavior of your employees. So uh, things that we uh, see with a lot of our customers is to have uh, ML models checking like um, uh, the 
the resources I'm used to access? Uh, am I trying to access a resource I never tried to access before? And am I trying to access the resources in the right uh, time window? Because based on my location, based on my habits, or when I'm walking, I would not access the same resources at the same time. So that's that's the kind of things you can do and enrich your uh, data points with this kind of information uh, to to detect suspicious behavior. Uh, then, well, uh, I mean, in Flink, uh, you and we provide like uh, Stream SQL Builder, which is a tool that we provide at Cloudera. It's just a UI uh, that where you can write your SQL queries and that will be triggering and running your Flink SQL job. Um, you can define the the things where you want to send the data. You will send this in most likely a data warehouse and then have some database monitoring tool on top of it for your dashboarding. So that's one part. And then, as I said at the beginning, dashboarding is nice. Uh, it's always cool to see a nice dashboards with uh, nice colors and so on. But you want alerting. Uh, that's actually the most important part of you, if you ask me. Um, so when you when your Flink SQL job is seeing something fishy, like someone doing something suspicious, uh, you probably want to send this alerts to some external system. So you have a few options. Uh, what we see usually is uh, Flink SQL sending those events that, um, that, that deserve like for ad additional, uh, let's say, review uh, to uh, a, a dedicated Kafka topic. And then from this Kafka topic, you can have NiFi or some other system uh, collecting this data and, and taking some actions. It can be uh, sending a text message, it can be sending a Slack notification. That's what is happening when I'm collecting from an um, unusual location. Uh, this kind of alert, and so it, it really depends on what you are uh, expecting and what actions you want to take following suspicious behavior. As I said, some of our customers, when they see something fishy, they don't want to just alert someone. They want to take some uh, proactive actions and they are going to actually rebook uh, access to some systems. Um, as I said before, uh, you have a crazy amount of log formats. Uh, every system, uh, they decide to invent a new way of making logs and it's making, uh, it's making things very fun. Uh, so with NiFi, you have a bunch of, um, uh, of tools, components, uh, trying to make things easier for you. Uh, as I said, for example, the first one is uh, for Cisco equipments, uh, especially VPNs. Those logs are uh, kind of a nightmare for process. Uh, so we are making this available to you so that you can easily process those logs. And then we have specific formats with more or less like uh, flexibility depending on what you are uh, doing. Uh, and then NiFi by definition is extensible, meaning that you can easily build your own components. So if you have yet another log format uh, that is esoteric. You can build your own components and, and do your own um, processing. We have this concept of uh, records in NiFi with readers and writers. Uh, this is a specific API that we expose in NiFi that is making things very easy uh, to call jobs, things from one format to another. Uh, same if you have questions about this API, let me know, uh, happy to answer. So just to, to give you an example for or the VPN, uh, Cisco as a VPN. Actually, when you receive the, the log message, uh, it's an example on the left. Uh, the message is containing an, an ID, uh, which is 725001. And this ID is actually giving you the schema that you can apply on top of the remaining text of this uh, log message. Uh, so you need to know in advance for every single ID and they are publishing new ones every week because otherwise it's not fun. Um, for every single ID, you need to know like what's the, the expected format and what kind of information you can extract. So for example, with this one, uh, we, we could, uh, with the component I was talking about, you could convert this log message uh, into this JSON payload where we are extracting uh, meaningful information. So that's, that's just an example. Um, very, very quickly, uh, that's SSB, uh, the, the tool we provide on top of Flink. Uh, I don't want to get into too much details, but as I said, I lost my demo, so I just took some screenshots and uh, this is what I was supposed to show you today. Um, so that's that's the UI where you can write your SQL queries. I'm not sure we can see it very clearly, but you can join 
uh, data from multiple sources. In this case, uh, Kafka topics, and you can run your your SQL uh, queries. I I won't go into too much details. I want to. I see we have only se seven minutes left, so I want to keep time for questions. And then that morning, uh, we we have like a data DS solution at Ferrara. I don't want to say. I mean, it's not really the topic for 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 this talk, but. You can have this kind of dashboards. You can look at some information. Like if you if you extract the logs from your let's say uh, uh, network equipments, something that uh, a lot of our customers are looking at is uh, from from where the data is uh, going to which destination. Because that's usually a good way to detect uh, a leak if someone is uh, connecting to some of your systems and sending data to some other. Location. So in this case, in this example, in this demo, uh, we can see that um, some equipment I have in the United States is sending data uh, in Russia or I think in China or somewhere. Uh, so that's that's where you would probably want to uh, to double check if that's something expected. Maybe it's perfectly digits for your business. Maybe it's not, and you want to take some uh, some actions. Uh, that's it. I went very quickly because, uh, as I said, uh, I lost my demo. Uh, uh, and I wanted to, to keep some time for, for questions. And we have five minutes left, so I guess uh, we can have some questions. If we do have questions. Otherwise, that's great, no question. I can talk about NIFI 180. Yeah. And um, what scaling consideration was to you? So you thought about hundreds of thousands of many fine. Yep. So how do you stay? Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's a great question. Actually, we had a lot of troubles uh, getting to this scale. Uh, so initially, so there, there are two ways, and I'm I'm talking about this specific customer. Uh, so they have, as I said, uh, 150,000 NFI agents collecting logs. Uh, so initially, well, we we took two approaches. The first one is sending data directly to Kafka. That's an option, uh, but it doesn't scale well. Uh, like based on our benchmarks, if you have a Kafka cluster, when you reach about 30,000, 40,000 connections, I mean, clients sending to the same uh, Kafka cluster, things are going not well. Uh, so it's where it, it, things start to break. Um, so in this case, it was still okay because they actually did, uh, uh, let's say, a geographically distributed architecture where they had like a Kafka cluster in the US, Kafka cluster in uh, South America, Kafka cluster in, uh, in Europe, etc. And in the end, it was okay. And then they used Mirror Maker uh, to replicate across the Kafka clusters the data so that they have all of the information in one place. So that's that's one approach. And and then the other approach is when you use Minify agents and sending uh, to Minify on Kubernetes, there is actually an option where um, so on NIFI, you, you will use the listen HTTP processor or you have other options, but let's, let's assume the listen HTTP processor. Uh, by default, internally, it's using a, a JT server. Uh, and unless you change the configuration, if I recall correctly, it's 200 uh, concurrent connections available for one NIFI instance. Then you can have multiple threading and, and so on. But let's say 200. Uh, but then when you, when you use NIFI on Kubernetes, uh, you can actually use custom metrics to uh, manage the auto scaling. So based on how many agents you have connecting to your Kubernetes uh, endpoints, you will be able to define the auto scaling uh, of your threshold. So that's how you would scale up and down based on how many MiniFi agents are sending data concurrently to your MiniFi uh, cluster. So we are nicely followed. Yeah, sure. Uh, balance the work with anticipate. Is it the fact that we just uh, turn the RAM robot a fridge? Yes, basically. I mean, uh, in, in this case, it's uh, Kubernetes doing their, uh, its own magic without the load balancer in front of it. Like, we are not doing anything specific here. And and by the way, I mean, not not for this specific case, but uh, in generally in NiFi, uh, when you have connections between two connectors, uh, you have a way, I mean, since NiFi 1, 14 or 15, uh, you have a way to uh, uh, to shuffle the data across your nodes. So, well, for, for this use case, it's not relevant. I mean, you wouldn't want to do this because by default, your data is already shuffled 
evenly across your nodes. But if you have a use case where you think that your data is not going to be evenly shuffled across your nodes, uh, you have options in NiFi and when designing your flows to shuffle the data across your nodes to make sure that every NiFi node is getting kind of the same amount of data. Yep. In this one, you're actually pushing for Kafka. Uh, can NiFi also mean from various Kafka topics? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. You can. Yeah, yeah. You can do that. Uh, and then beyond the the data flow echo stuff, uh, why else? It's like I'm. I, I know you talk about security use case, but I'm assuming you can apply to it back out log quality for another use case. Well, I'm just trying to understand, uh, like say, you know, I'm processing those logs and, you know, face validations, et cetera. How does it like compare to something that the else that does processing? I'm just trying to understand how do you go about this with like something like Spark, what's that for me? From the uh, processing. Yeah. Um... Well, I mean, yeah, so I, I don't like to uh, oppose like Spark or Flint with NiFi. Uh, the processing, I mean, again, what what happens what happens in NiFi is really what I call uh, light processing. Uh, like you would take the logs, you would normalize the logs into another format like the JSON paper that was showing. You would do some filtering because maybe some of the logs you don't care about. Uh, you would do some enrichments, but it's really log by log, let's say, you, you wouldn't do some, uh, you wouldn't do any aggregation or merging into NiFi. NiFi is really about moving the data and then you will use something like Spark and Flink to do all of this heavy processing. Can we do that? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you if you search for NiFi on the internet, you will see main comparison of NiFi with uh, uh, Uzi or Airflow or I mean, it, it, it drives me crazy uh, because usually when I see those blog posts and there is a lot of crazy things being said in those blog posts, uh, the NiFi versus Airflow is uh, one of the top articles you can find on, on Google and it's... Anyway, uh, I, I don't like these blog posts. Uh, but yeah, uh, NiFi is really about getting the data in the right place uh, from, from many systems that have very different ways of making the data available. Then you make the data into a destination system, whatever system you want to use, NiFi doesn't care. And and then you would use other systems uh, to do the actual processing. And see, that's how to put that. I see it was the last question, why didn't you finish our money question? Yeah. I think that's a lot present. How do you present something? That you have a different Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's a very good question uh, because I mean you have many options uh, to connect folks. Like, uh, uh, yeah, that's crazy how many options you have. Uh, what I would say is, uh, as far as I know, but may, maybe you would disagree. Like the 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 other options I'm aware of uh, are usually very good at something very specific, uh, and you can't use it for all of the use cases, sources, systems you may have. Like if we think about something like um, uh, the Spring for Waters or Friendly, those kind of agents, they are they are good for, uh, for some things, but like when I was saying, for example, you want to collect the audit docs from Slack, it's uh, you need to consume from an HTTP API. Those agents are not really good for, for this, uh, as far as I know, maybe maybe I'm not up to date on, on this, but with NiFi, you, you can cover all of the different ways I was mentioning, like you have sources sending logs uh, to you. Uh, in some cases, you need to get the logs uh, through API or through, I don't know, some uh, protocols, web sockets, whatever. Um, so that that would be like, that would be my approach. Like NiFi and the MiNiFi agents provide a consistent way of collecting those logs across any system you can think of. That's that's the way I, I see it. Maybe, uh, maybe some would disagree. This is a very uh, common topic. Do you mean of this thing for the MPF for the bill commit? Sure. Thank you.